A deadly pandemic has been turning humans into mindless infected, attacking each other in order to spread the seeming hive mind fungi organism, where the last stages of the infection causes the host victims to want to ascend to a higher place in order to bloom in a horrifying manner, turn into a fungi and spread the spores even further to infect more people. The infection has been so much out of control and mismanaged that the spore storm, as they call it, has become such a common occurrence that the media has created a specific guideline broadcast to prepare the citizens of how to avoid the infection. Pablo, whom I will call the protagonist non-canonically, is spending his evening watching TV as usual. That's when his program is interrupted by the well-known emergency broadcast about the spore storm, instilling fear in his heart on how he needs to be vigilant and careful not to turn. According to the broadcast, the place Pablo seems to live in is Spain, as the broadcast is from Spain's Plague Control Department. If you are seeing this video, you are currently experiencing a spore storm. This is a newly occurring weather phenomenon. The robotic voice of the broadcast explains the spores are carried through clouds carrying billions of tiny spores and visible to eyes, which only one is enough to infect a host. The disease is extremely contagious and the severity of the infection causes the victims to have no possible treatment or cure when they start showing the very first symptoms. The stage 2 of the infection leads to paranoia and extreme desire to socialize, as the fungi reaches the brain and starts controlling the host to spread the disease further by socializing. Stage 3 is the activation, when the victim has a severe desire to go to a higher place where they possibly perish, going into a state known as blooming, when they transform into a deformed version of themselves, growing fungi all over, with the spore being created to leave to another massive spore storm. Pablo seems a little too used to the broadcast as it's been the third time this year having experienced spore storm. Pablo quickly goes on his computer to check on the instructions to follow during the spore storm to understand how to stay safe as the broadcast was more like a warning than anything else. The tiny spores can easily move through air filtration and only FP3 masks can stop them from passing through, so regular masks would be no good at stopping them. The citizens are instructed to stay home until the air is fully clear of any spores and should not leave under any circumstances unless necessary necessary, but not without wearing adequate filtration devices. The spores are also mentioned not to be water soluble, so it doesn't mix in the water. Confinement alarms will also sound when a very small percentage of spores is detected. Now, to stay safe, any contact with infected should be avoided, as even 30 second interaction could lead to the infected host passing on the infection. In case of contamination, temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius will only destroy the spores or other methods of disinfection such as using alcohol. Also, it is recommended to only contact the emergencies when symptoms are observed or only after the spore storm has passed as the emergency personnel will only attend the place of interest when it is safe not to risk contracting the infection. With all of that, Pablo suddenly hears knocking coming from his basement door, which rightfully startles him greatly, being extremely on the edge. Carefully, he goes to the basement's door, gathering all of his might, asking who it is. An anxious young voice is heard in response, who introduces himself as Hugo. He explains on his way home, he heard the spore storm alarm, having no other choice but to break into the nearest place to take shelter, being Pablo's basement. He pleads with Pablo to let him inside, as he broke the door to get in, and with the badly sealed windows in the basement, he would turn into an infected in no time. Initially, Pablo doesn't want to take the risk, but soon enough, as he sees how Hugo actually doesn't insist and push the matter, he feels Hugo might not be actually infected, as one of the symptoms is the extreme desire for socialization. Therefore, Pablo opens the door for him to get inside, as in fact, he would turn into an infected in the basement. Hugo thanks Pablo and stays in the living room until the storm passes, so he can get back on his way back home. Just then, when he's sizing up Hugo, just trying to figure him out, his phone suddenly starts ringing, which Pablo picks up with his neighbor across 
Anna, being on the other line, extremely worried about the storm as it's the very first storm she's experiencing. Pablo reassures Ona that she shouldn't worry but should stay in and make sure every door and window is closed as the spore is airborne. In here, we learn the storm typically lasts two hours or so, but as of recently, the Department for the Plague Control has introduced new instructions, depicting the fungi is evolving and becoming more contagious and aggressive. Apparently it is now airborne and causes the final stage known as blooming, which causes the host victim to get completely decimated and deformed into a monstrous fungi creature, spreading the spores even further. This seems to be the start of a new challenging pandemic which could pose as the extinction of humanity. As Pablo is deep in his own thoughts, starting to get creeped out thinking of all the new possibilities and how he could actually get infected, his train of thoughts come to a welcome stop, being interrupted by the ringing sound of the telephone again. Picking it up, it turns out to be Ono again, asking Pablo if the tap water is safe to drink with the current dilemma, asking if the spores could contaminate the water. Remembering what he read online, that the spores are not water soluble, Pablo confidently instructs Ona to feel at ease drinking the tap water, as the alternatives could pose danger such as going out to buy bottled water. While talking, Ona flirts with Pablo, calling him a cutie, which catches him off guard, blushing uncontrollably, yet trying to contain himself miserably, as he actually has a crush on Ona. As Pablo gets back to his living room, a strange pattern of knocks are heard coming from the main door, which again startles Pablo. Through the peephole, he looks outside to see a suited man standing behind the door. This mysterious person introduces himself as Ray, a representative of the plague control department. He randomly asks to come in without giving any reason, to which Pablo thinks logically, telling him why he's not wearing the recommended mask in a spore storm. That's just when the supposed agent of the play control department says that he will be back with a mask, to which Pablo tries to challenge him that it won't matter anymore as he's probably already infected, but before he can finish, the agent leaves. Almost instantly, Ono calls back, saying that she feels cold and wants to turn the heat pump on, which would potentially carry the outside air in. The reason for her call is to ask whether it would be safe to do that or not. Yet again, according to what Pablo read, he explains that the dust filter won't be enough to keep the spores out, and the heat from the heat pump won't be high enough to kill the spores as it needs to be at least 100 degrees Celsius. Ona listens to his instructions and as soon as he puts the phone down, the door gets knocked on again by none other than Ray, who introduced himself as a representative of the plague control department. This time around, he is seen wearing a cheap medical mask, which is clearly not enough to keep the spores out, as the instructions mentioned FP3 is the minimum to keep a person safe. This time around, he insists to come in to talk with Pablo about something. Pablo asks him to explain what it is that he needs to talk about while being outside, which takes him some time to come up with an excuse, saying that he's here to install the water filter in order to have safe drinking water. While in fact, spores are not water soluble, Pablo asks where this mysterious water filter is as he is empty handed, to which he again says that he will be back, leaving Pablo mid-sentence. While in the house, he speaks to Hugo a little getting to know him when he offers Pablo a drink after the storm is over as a token of appreciation for his kind gesture of letting him in. Ona calls yet again, interrupting their conversation, sounding very distressed and anxious, explaining that while she was trying to warm herself up in the house, her alarm went off, noticing that an infected is banging on her main door, trying to break in. That's when Pablo tells her to stay calm most importantly and find a place to lock herself in, somewhere where the air can be tightly sealed. She should wait there until the storm passes and then call the emergencies. As she will be locked in somewhere, Pablo promises to call the authorities himself as soon as the storm is over. Ona appreciates Pablo's help tonight in keeping her safe and asks him on a date when all of this blows over, to which Pablo looks forward to. As he places the phone down, Ray, the agent, knocks on the door again, bringing the water filter with himself, having no face mask on, 
this time around. Pablo being frustrated to how ridiculous Ray truly is. He knows explaining he didn't ask him to bring water filter would be pointless as he would quickly dismiss it when he asks to see some identification. Of course Ray doesn't have any and of course he tells Pablo to hang tight as he will go and fetch one. At this point Pablo is not surprised anymore and knows the drill waiting to see him knocking on the door again. Just then, waiting to hear from Ona or the knocks of the supposed agent Ray, a public announcement reports on how the storm is over and it is safe to leave. To which, a sense of anxiety hits Pablo so hard, being curious yet scared to leave. Despite having experienced the storm before, this time around, it seems to be a lot more severe and very different. That's when Pablo peeps outside and opens the door, when a compulsion grips his body, having a desire to leave. He steps through the empty silent streets paved with the red mold, a sight he hasn't seen before. Despite the eeriness of it all, Pablo aims to go to the observatory to have a better look at the city. The landscape displays a horrifying scene of how the mold has spread on a massive scale, stretching from building to building as far as the horizon reaches. As the sun rises, Pablo, in a menacing way, describes the site as a beautiful scene, hinting that he is most likely infected, as when the spore infects a host body, it slowly reaches the brain, changing the perception of the host, making them believe the horrifying scene of infection is beautiful. So it's very possible when the public announcement was broadcasted, the storm wasn't over and the spores had been lingering in the air. It's quite possible whoever reported the announcement was infected themselves, tricking the listeners to go out in order to get infected. This displays the horrifying powers and intelligence of the fungi hive mind organism and how it tricks its hosts by manipulating and controlling their minds to spread. Throughout the phone conversations Pablo has with Ona, he has to direct her in order to keep safe and avoid being infected. If you don't read the instructions on the website or don't follow them even once, Ona turns into an infected, with the spores taking over her body and mind. The very first signs are seen when going to the window where the phone is, where you see a faint blurred outline of Ona with vivid red eyes. Hearing the knocks on the door again, he goes to check through the people seeing no one, only having a sight to the outstretch of the neighborhood street of how badly it has been consumed by the red trail of the mold, infecting almost every single household in the neighborhood. The sight horrifies Pablo as it's quickly depicted that this storm is like none before, bringing humanity to its knees. That's when a window breaks, with Pablo seeing Ona with broken shards of glass lodged in her body and face, with vivid red eyes telling Pablo that she couldn't resist being alone anymore, and she had this unexplainable urge of interacting with Pablo. Of no fault of her own, trusting Pablo and following his wrong instructions in this playthrough, she turns into an infected with the spores almost fully taking over her mind in a sinister manner and deep crackling voice saying that she wants to be beautiful and bloom, slowly transforming into a monstrosity blooming and infecting both Pablo and Hugo. That's when Pablo's vision goes blurry, having an intense desire to ascend and go to a higher place in order to bloom. He feels like he can't move, but his body moves on its own and it seems like he doesn't mind it that much, yet he has the sense of impending doom that something is wrong, feeling as if being controlled from within. He feels like he's rotting and things are growing, reproducing inside of him, but but something within tells him it's all okay, as he will be one of them, one part of the functioning hive mind organism. When he sees himself atop the observatory, blooming, splitting apart with the mold, feeling as if becoming beautiful despite the excruciating pain. This confirms that the normal ending also ends up with Pablo becoming infected as he has this unexplainable urge of going to a high place, observing the city landscape and calling it beautiful despite it rotting with mold, with almost everyone being infected. 
The other ending involves Hugo turning into an infected. F. Pablo refuses to let Hugo get inside due to the bad seal of the windows and the door being broken. The spores inevitably get inside the basement. Despite not letting him in, Pablo talks to Hugo constantly and offers him his towel to keep warm. They get to know each other, to which Hugo explains it's okay as he is used to being treated badly. And, in fact, Pablo has been one of the nicest people that he has ever encountered and met, who offered him his towel and allowed him to stay in his basement for shelter. He also explains that he was on his way home, the place where he shares with his companion Al, Alfredo, his pet cat, who has the only friend that he has, and he's so glad that before leaving he left a full bowl of water and food for him to not starve or die. Despite Pablo saying Hugo is a nice guy and he should have more friends, he says that he doesn't think so and has little self-respect and confidence, depicting how badly he has been treated all his life. That's when he sincerely thanks Pablo and tells him he won't bother him anymore and won't ask to get in, going down to the basement. As Pablo heads back to the living room, it doesn't take long before he hears running from the basement up to the door, with Hugo being a lot more pushed than before, saying that he needs to get in and his pet dog is waiting for him, clearly being infected, saying how lonely he is. Starting to feel terrified, Pablo backs away, but it doesn't take long before Hugo breaks the door with bloody red eyes, thanking Pablo for being so kind to him and how he wants to return the favor, before blooming and infecting Pablo, which ends similarly to the other bad ending. Finally, the other bad ending involves letting Ray in. The impersonator pretending to be the representative of the plague control department, or maybe one actually, who has turned. As soon as he is let in, he starts twitching and informing Pablo that they need to go somewhere high, before he transforms, with Pablo getting infected as a result and going to the observatory before transforming himself, being part of this vicious hive mind organism. Although short, this game seems to be actually in development and more updates are coming which could potentially expand on the lore and the characters, which I'm really looking forward to playing. Thank you folks for being here, it's been your host Star, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.